Hello everyone, my name is Ira Fay, and I'm excited to show you this game from the League Championship Tournament from 2023. So there's a year-long league that runs from about January to mid-November, and there are multiple different tiers of the league, and then if you place high enough in your tier, then you get to participate in a final League Championship Tournament, and I... I'm in tier one. I placed high enough in tier one that I'm able to participate in the league tournament. So this is round one. It's a double elimination tournament, and I'm I'm not exactly sure why we do it that way. Um, I think it's just to have variety, but it's a double elimination tournament where you only play one game uh, for a match, and so there's bidding. And um, in this, the higher seed gets to bid first, so I bid, and I bid two tokens, and my opponent accepted. So they're playing free people. Shiggy is my opponent. They're playing free people, and I'm playing Shadow. So we both got these nice starting rolls. Neither of us got particularly playable cards. They got Swords and Ariador and Challenge of the King, and I got uh, Balrog, which is useful to fight Lorien, but um, not particularly playable and obviously Deadly Strife is extremely powerful combat card. So these are, I'm happy to see these cards, but um, not playable. That said, I didn't roll any Palantirs and neither did my opponent. So, um, all right. So pretty standard start. I muster Isengard to war. They move the Fellowship once and are safe. I move Baradur to Gorgoroth. My plan is to go after the Elves early on. They move a second time, get hit with a three and Gandalf goes. So that's, um, you know, obviously they don't, like getting hit, better to be missed, but getting a three and losing Gandalf on turn one when you know that Saruman is coming can be quite effective. So I'm not sure that they're even particularly disappointed about that. I move units. I bring this regular from North Dunland to Moria because if I have a little overkill in Lorien, which I'm hoping I might with Durin's Bane, then I can always reroute this army from Lorien down to Rohan later. So I'm okay bringing this extra regular, and I have enough army movement that I think it's probably going to be okay. And there are a variety of combat cards that that regular Isengard unit will turn on. All right, they move armies, and it's interesting. You know, getting these armies in position to be prepared to fend off the attack against Helm's Deep is useful, but I also think that, um, like, getting elves closer to war could be good, especially since you have the muster action token. You can muster up. They don't know that I have Balrog or Moria yet, um, but yeah, I, I don't know. I see a lot of people do this move, Edoras to Westamnet and Carrick to Old Forest Road. I like it if I have scouts, but given they don't have scouts yet, I'm not sure. All right, anyway, I get um, Saruman. They move a third time, which I think is right. I mean, you don't want to get hit. You don't want to get revealed into Moria, but at the same time, you want to move the Fellowship along, and you've just taken some pretty efficient corruption with Gandalf. So I do hit them, 75% chance of hitting them on their third move with two dice, and I do reveal them. And so, you know, there were, uh, how many, 15 tiles? So nine out of 15 tiles reveal them. So what is that? That's two, that's 60% times 75%. So close to 50% to get revealed. 45% maybe to get revealed, so a little unlucky, but not so unexpected to get revealed here on their third move. All right, so they go into Goblin's Gate, and obviously they're avoiding the extra corruption from um, Moria. I might have been slightly tempted to go Moria just because it gives me a chance to heal. It gives me a chance to get Strider down to Minas Tirith, so... All right, and then I just move armies along, and they get Axe and Bow and Grimbeard. So they're happy to see these scouts. So, you know, the chances of getting scouts early in the game, decent for free people, but that was only a 3 out of 23 chance to draw the scouts right there. So not not the best, not the best chances. Um, okay, I allocate and I roll one more, and they get Gandalf turn two. So this is, this is really exactly what you want to be seeing is free people. You're just going to make steady progress with the fellowship. And um, I'm curious just to look for a second. Um, okay. So I draw a strategy card here. So one of the problems I did roll now two Palantirs on turn two, not that useful. I could play give it to us, but then the other one's going to be wasted. So I draw one to see what I get. 
the shadow lengthens is fine. I could use that for Dol Golder into Dimrel Dale, but then this army is still lagging behind. So because I happen to roll plenty of armies, I'm just going to move this army the hard way and I'll save shadow lengthens for another effect. All right. Um, they get Gandalf. Obviously, that's great. And um, I move armies along this army from Far Harad to Near Harad. At some point, maybe I'll draw Corsairs of Umbar. And this army from um, no Man, from Daggerlad to No Man Land will then go to Southern Rovanian, will then go to Northern Rovanian, and I'll merge up outside of Lorien and Dimmerdale. So I'm happy to see these army movements. And now my armies in, are in possession, position. They um, move the fellowship because, of course, they should. I do hit them here, and they get a three. So, um, yeah, pretty lucky to get um, a roll like that to hit them. Chances are relatively low on only one movement. So, they get they get they take a random because it's a three, and they don't want to go too high on corruption. I think that's right. Obviously, don't want to lose Strider, but. You do want to not go super high. So um, they're up to four corruption now. And uh, that's that. So Sauron, uh, I get Sauron to war because I do need Sauron to war to be able to make these attacks. And they play Axe and Bow here. Um, I think that makes a lot of sense. Normally, I wouldn't I wouldn't play Axe and Bow, but there's no other playable card. And I mean, you could technically play Grimbjorn, but I would definitely save that for, for this impending attack. So really no card to play here. I guess Swords and Ariador, but Axe and Bow makes sense. I rarely play it, but if you have an extra Palantir, why not? So that's a nice play. And I get um, I get Give It To Us out of my hand to get it into the Hunt Pool. At some point, they might make it to Mordor, so good to have it in the pool. I don't really have anything else that I'm excited to play. All right, we go on to next round. So I get Lure of the Ring and Stormcrow. Not pretty particularly powerful cards, but not bad. Um, and the Stormcrow can be useful as great host. They also happen to have a companion in North. So there could be some shenanigans with keeping North off of war if I want to, depending on what they're doing. They um, draw an Ent card and Kindred of Glorfindel. They declare the fellowship to, um, to Old Ford. Um, and now... And, and they do that because, even though I didn't have a Nazgul on them, because cards like uh, Nazgul Search or Nazgul Strike can be played, or, or Crow Weather, um, can be played when the Fellowship is one or higher on the track. So it makes sense for them to declare. All right. And then I get this really quite bad roll given my hand. So sometimes getting a bunch of Palantirs can be good because you can make you know, you can make use of them, or at least it can potentially be not bad. Um, but in this situation, this is going to be a really awkward role because I don't have, um, I just don't have useful cards to play. So last turn I was struggling a little bit with useful um, Palantirs. I had to use a Palantir to draw a card. Um, so, and then they get this incredible roll. So really nice for them. I don't know that they're going to crown Aragorn here. One, two, three, one, two, three. They could move once and crown Aragorn and get Pippin into somewhere useful. So I would have been a little tempted to do that. Another thing they could do is potentially just muster up elves and see what happens. Um, so they have a huge amount of flexibility. Those three wills of the West are totally safe because I don't have um, the South Rounds and Easterlings at war yet. So uh, they move, and I do hit them, which is lucky, and then uh, they get revealed. So they're revealed into Carrick. Um, I would have loved to get at least one muster this round, because then I would have gotten the Witch King, and it would have been an extra die. Um, it's maybe not super big of a problem, because um, I did at least get three attacks. So I can get my army into position outside of um, Woodland Realm. They do have scouts. I didn't have... Um, I didn't have Swarm of Bats. If I had Swarm of Bats, I would have played it, but I only have two Swarm of Bats in my deck. So I don't know exactly what their, ch what are their chances of having scouts in the top three cards? So let's just, let's just calculate that quickly. The way we do that is we calculate, if we want to know at least one, so what are the chances they had at least one? We calculate the chances that they had zero, and then it's the sort of the opposite of that. So the chance of having zero on your first draw is 21 divided by 24 times 20 divided by 23 
times uh, 19 divided by 22. Something went wrong. All right. Uh, at the beginning, 21 divided by 24 times 20 divided by 23. 23 times 19 divided by 22. All right, so chances of not of, of having zero scouts, that's what we just calculated. You didn't draw scouts on the first card, didn't draw scouts on the second card, didn't draw scouts on the third card. That's 65% chance. So the chances of having a scouts by now is 35%. So fine. Nothing, nothing particularly special about this. Slightly in their favor, but not a big deal. All right, so they get um, a unit into Woodland Realm. I don't love that, but not the end of the world. Uh, and then they hide. And now I have a choice. One thing I could do here is wait to see if they muster the elves. Another thing that I could do is get some um, units onto the fellowship right here. And I think because the hunt has generally been going well, I got lucky with those two hits on sixes, uh, and they have all this movement here, I feel inclined to try and maybe slow them down a little bit. So um, the value of two rerolls on the Fellowship after they've already moved once is quite high. Um, and I know I, I want to take care of the North anyway because they got this regular into Woodland Realm. So I need to in some probably take care of Carrick, probably take care of Dale. Um, so this does allow the free people to start mustering the elves to war. And unless I have ring wraiths or abroad, then they're going to be able to muster um, units into elven strongholds. But they're going to, it's going to require two, two of their wills of the West plus um, their token, or maybe all three wills of the West to, to make a dent in that because the elves are not, has not, have not been progressed towards war at all. So I guess that's my, my thinking. I'm willing to let the elven strongholds, um, buff up a little bit in exchange for slowing down the fellowship if shadow or if free people choose to go that direction. So um, I decide to move armies. I get this army ready in Umbar. I now have captured Carrick and have two extra rerolls this turn, which I'm happy with. They pass, and then I go ahead and attack Dale. And the problem is my, my hand is very awkward because I have nothing that I want to play here. The Balrog is a great combat card. Return to Valinor is a great combat card. Threats and Promises, perfectly fine combat card in Lorien. Um, Stormcrow is okay, but I don't really need it against the North. I'd rather use it as a combat effect. So my plan is take out Dale using Great Host. The chances of them having two scouts in their top three cards are extremely low. So I think that um, Great Host is going to be very effective against Dale. Uh, and then I will be able to draw a card. Um, and hopefully they're going to get revealed and I'll be able to play Lure of the Ring. I did have a chance to play Lure of the Ring earlier, and maybe I should have done that when they were revealed in Carrick because it would be an expected value of two corruption uh, and it would start to whittle things down so that Strider is more likely to be lost as a random companion. But um, I thought that uh, maybe I'd have time. And two, I wanted to get my, uh, what I wanted to do is get my army in position to get these two rerolls on them. So that's why I prioritized attacking um, Old Forest Road and then immediately followed by um, an army movement onto Carrick so that when they hid, I was able to be on them in Carrick so they didn't get another movement without those two rerolls. So that's why I did it that way. Obviously, I'm hoping they get revealed and I'll be able to play Lord of the Ring. All right, so I play Stormcrow. Uh, they get a hit against me. I leave one behind in Old Forest Road so that if they move and get revealed and declared, I'll still have a reroll on them. And um, and now they get their armies in position into Erebor because they're worried I have something like Ring Rancer Abroad. So I think that I think that makes a lot of sense. And um, and then I draw a character card. I don't know if that was the right choice or not. I guess I feel like there are a lot of character cards that can be effective. Any of the red tiles I would be happy to play. Um, any of the hunt drawing tiles would be happy to play, um, ring rates are abroad. Like a lot of, I think there are a lot of character cards that I can play now that, um, oh, interesting. Sorry. Now that I think about it, I actually can't play the tile drawing cards cause they are in a settlement. So yeah, maybe that's, maybe that's wrong, but like worn with sorrow and toil I could play. Um, yeah, maybe it's wrong. I, I don't know. I guess I'm I'm shifting a little towards corruption because I feel like my military is going a little slow and um, and I've just been getting some decent 
hunt rolls. So might as well lean into that a little bit. They do move again because I don't know what else could they do. That makes sense to me. They move and I hit them. So way to go Nazgul on that. And I get only a one, which is fine. It would have been really nice if I had revealed them there. Um, they have not been revealed a huge amount, but um, because then I could have played Lord of the Ring. But so be it. They lose axe and bow. The, uh, the one is the one. Um, what would you do here? I have two Palantirs. One option is just draw a card. I could just draw a card with um, Threats and Promises. I mean, discard Threats and Promises, which is probably my weakest card. Um, I could play Shadow Lengthens. I would love to use it to sort of reinforce this Dale army. Uh, but the South Rounds and Easterlings are not at war yet. So, yeah. This this was a tough call, and this was the problem with the roll. I just didn't have I didn't have useful cards to play, and maybe that's you know if I had drawn more strategy cards earlier on, I could be playing various army reinforcement cards. Um, maybe this this was a mistake drawing um, a character card here, especially because they're they are in Carrick, so might have been a minor inaccuracy there because I, I couldn't have played it. All right, uh, probably a mistake there. Um, I end up playing Balrog because. Um, I don't want to discard cards from my hand. I don't know. I'm really curious. Leave in the comments. What would you do? Turn three. What would you have done? Would you have drawn black? Would you have drawn a character card? Would you have drawn a strategy card? And then once you draw kind of an unplayable card, what do you end up doing with this hand of six with these two Palantirs remaining? I'm still hoping they're going to move again. And, um, I mean, I, in some ways I'm hoping they're going to move again. In other ways, I'm hoping they're not going to move again. Um, they're... I think they see that my military is going slowly. So they are also going a little slower on the fellowship. It's really a, a push and pull. So they they use a token here to muster the elves towards war. And I guess their thinking is they can get the elves one away from war at the start of next turn so that they'll be able to either muster in Woodland Realm or Lorien, and that'll be nice for them. So I play Shadow Lengthens here because that's my only playable card. And um, the other option was just drawing cards and discarding a bunch. So maybe that's what I should have done. I don't know. Playing Balrog just to be able to use it in the future as a combat effect, very rare. I almost never do that. Um, but but I guess I was wary of discarding too many cards, especially because I like all these cards. These are perfectly useful. Delivery of Orthanc, maybe I could have redrawn. Yeah, tough call. All right, so they muster the elves again, and now elves are one away from war, and um, I get Candles of Corpses and Monsters Rouse, nothing particularly special. Candles of Corpses could be useful for the corruption game. Monsters Rouse, perfectly fine combat card. All right, they declare. Um, I guess their thinking is they don't want to give me two rerolls. Better to give me one reroll, but it does turn on um, all the character drawing cards or the tile drawing cards but that's probably okay all right i allocate and i roll one more and then they get two wills of the west and they're going to be able to keep making some steady progress here they move and i miss them that's fair um and i decide here that uh i would rather so my plan here is i, I see that they have one muster so they're going to either get to muster once in lorian or muster once in woodland realm my thinking is i'm going to have to reinforce anyway up here in, in Dale to take out Dew. So I'd rather take out Lorien very um, easily. And um, and then I will hopefully have an army left over there to be able to come down towards Rohan. That's that's my thinking. Um, especially if they have something like Celeborns, then I don't want that to get up to four. I really do want to take out this army. Also, maybe Power Too Great at some point is coming. So I'd rather take care of Lorien. So um, they get an elite in uh, Woodland Realm. I obviously put it under siege, and then they start passing. So I bring the Witch King in to Lorien, and then they move a second time. I hit them here, which is certainly fair, three dice on a five, and they don't get revealed. So um, they take a random on the two, which I guess makes sense because they don't want to go up to six corruption, and then they lose Strider. So a um, little bad luck. You know, expect to lose Strider on the third random draw, not the second random draw. Um, yeah, but at least they're not revealed. So that's something. And um, I play back Black Captain Commands here to get up to uh, three, I mean, five leadership. 
that recruits to Nazgul. And I know that I'm going to want those Nazgul because I can very easily predict where the fellowship is going to go, especially now that Strider's gone, though even when Strider wasn't gone, I'm happy to have um, the fellowship sort of, I, I want to put hunt pressure on the fellowship. So um, I'm going to play Balrog. And this is one of the, you know, I generally prefer playing in person because after you play a card, um, with the Witch King, you can redraw the appropriate card face down. But one of the nice things about the um, the the Java client is that you can select. So I've you seen I selected a shadow card. I selected Balrog, and it's on the board. I just clicked it and then pressed F1, and now it's selected. So um, my opponent forgets that I have Balrog in play and plays advantageous position. But clearly, I'm playing Balrog. It's uh, for sure. So that's just a minor mistake on their part. Um, they had they had plenty of wow. They had all three advantageous positions. So okay. So they're gonna play it either way. But I guess you end up holding it just in case. But all right. Um, of all the three, I think I would have played Swords and Ariador before I would have played Power of Tom Bombadil, because Power of Tom Bombadil can defend the Shire and sort of surprise um, the free pe the sh uh, shadow if they end up going like range of the Dunlendings to the Shire. So I might have, I might have saved that. Um, okay. I get uh, two hits on Balrog and then one more, they get three hits against me, which um, sort of reduces my hopes of having a, a big, large leftover army in Lorien, but so be it. Um, I redraw flocks of Crabane, one of the least useful uh, cards, I think. And um, then I play Devil, Devilry of Orthanc. They very um, um, skillfully play another advantageous position, canceling out my Devilry of Orthanc. So that's nice card play on their part there. Um, but I end up rolling two sixes anyway. So they get one hit. I'm left with this army in Lorien. Not too impressive. I mean, I'm happy to have taken out Lorien. It didn't get reinforced at all. Um, obviously, Woodland Realm is going to be a much harder battle given they got three extra hit points in there. But... Uh, this is okay for me. I don't know that this army is really doing much to Rohan. So they play Elven Rope. And um, and then I think they... I, I move my... Uh, what did I just do? I muster... From Gorgoroth to minus Morgul. Uh, no, where am I? What did I just do? Why did I? From Gorgoroth to my, I don't understand. Oh, I guess, sorry. I thought that when I played, um, right, when I played uh, Shadow Lengthens before, for some reason I was thinking I had completely formed up this army in Minus Morval, but instead I just formed up into, Nor yeah. Okay, so I guess what I'm doing here is I'm repositioning onto the Fellowship I don't think they're going to move again, but I am getting these two regulars into um, from Old Forest Road back into Woodland Realm, and hopefully that'll be enough. I'm leaving units in North Rune temporarily so that I can muster there in case I roll a bunch of musters next round. Maybe this is wrong. I don't know. Um, yeah, did I really need to move those armies like that? I guess I just I haven't gotten enough musters to get the Southrons and Easterlings to war. So that's why I'm not bothering to move them yet. By bringing these two regulars to Woodland Realm, given that I have um, Deadly Strife and Desperate Battle, I feel like there's a chance that I can take out Woodland Realm with, with 10 hit points, even against their six. So that's why I'm bringing in these two extras, because I think those two extras might actually make enough of a difference. All right. What did they do? They drew a strategy card. That's interesting. I think I would have drawn my strategy card before playing Elven Rope. If you if you were thinking, well, should I draw? Should I play Elven Rope? Draw your strategy card first, see what you get, and then um, play the Elven Rope. Not not a big deal, but minor. Okay, uh, I move Nazgul around. I don't leave any on Old Forest Road because I anticipate they're going to declare away from that, and um, I can use my Nazgul more efficiently. I leave a um, Nazgul in North Rune because. In case I roll a bunch of character dice next round, it will allow me to move this army into position. So we'll see what I get. Um, they um, help unlook Four Horn of Gondor. Okay. 
And I get rid of Flox or Cobane. It's just not that useful. Um, I'm happy to see Rage of the Dunlandings. That can let me make some nice surprise attacks. And um, Monsters Roused. So I have Monsters Roused and Rage of the Dunlandings. That starts to be an attack on uh, Rivendell. They do they do have um, the Elves at War. So I, they have to roll. They don't have to be a turn where they don't roll anything. All right. So they declare away from Old Forest Road. Um, I think that's probably right, but I do wonder if they hadn't done that, then I wouldn't have been free to move these two um, orcs. So, all right, um, they get this beautiful roll. Now, without Strider, the chances of getting into um, getting into Mordor this round are not that great, um, especially because I have all these reveals. So they needed they needed quite a few movement to be able to do this, I did only roll one eye. So maybe that was a mistake on my part. Maybe I should have allocated a second eye here. I sort of just reflexively allocated only one. But given that I was doing a corruption strategy, yeah, I didn't really think about that at the time. Would you have allocated two eyes? Would you have allocated three or four eyes here? Um, I thought the chances of them getting into Mordor this round were low. Seeing this roll, seeing this hunt pool, seeing only one eye, it's like, yeah, maybe they're going to make it in. I did have Orc Patrol also. I mean, there are a bunch of eyes still in the pool. So, all right, so they move. I hit them, and they do get revealed. So that's a nice start for me. Um, and I play Lure of the Ring here. Gimli goes. So that's worth two corruption. They hide, and... Um, I draw a character card because I want to be able to cycle with the Witch King in Woodland Realm. And um, they move again, and now they're they're safe on this movement. So, you know, is it more reasonable that they got hit on the first move and missed on the second move? Yeah, I think the expected number of hits is probably close to one if you move twice with two dice. Um, so in the end, that luck balanced out. Now... I thought about playing Orc Patrol here. Um, I don't know what to do. I mean, if I play Orc Patrol, what am, what am I going to draw? Like me, maybe I get one of these reveals and maybe I should do that just on the, on the chance that I do. Um, yeah, maybe, maybe the right thing to do is play Orc Patrol right here. Would you play Orc Patrol here? Leave in the comments. Do you play Orc Patrol here? Do you do something else? Um, I um, get the Southrons and Easterlings to war um, so that I can threaten nothing. I don't know. I only have character dice here. I don't know why I did that. Um, I guess my thinking is... I don't know what my thinking is there. Why, why prioritize that? Um, why not attack? Why not attack into Woodland Realm and see what I get? So they're still passing here. Yeah. I attack into Woodland Realm just to cycle at this point. I have no idea. So that was probably a mistake also. Why why bother getting the South Rounds and Easterlings to war when I'm not even threatening Day Without Dawn because I don't have any Palantirs left. All right, so I play Grand. I forfeit. Um, I say I forfeit four, but actually I only needed to forfeit three. Um, and uh, they get their one hit against me with, with uh, Power Too Great. And I did get uh, two hits. So that's a nice start for me. And I redraw into Shelob's Lair. Um, I roll, uh, they say I only need four foot three. So I roll one extra. It's not a six, so it doesn't matter. All right. And then, um, and then they move the fellowship because in case I drew cruel weather or something like that. Um, okay. So they move and then I hit them <clears throat> and now I get an eye and the chances of revealing them there were good. So, and then the extra, they take one corruption and, uh, then the extra tile is also an eye. So not unreasonable luck on their part. I mean, fair that they're, you know, they got hit twice. They got revealed twice. They moved three times. Yeah. Safe from cruel weather. They're getting into Mordor turn five, having lost Strider earlier. And the hunt pool is, you know, relatively friendly. I don't know. It doesn't seem horrible. They're at zero effective, zero corruption right now. Um, I play Shelob's Lair. I play Candles of Corpses. It gets one hit. Obviously, it would have been nice to do more, but one is 
you know, expected is one and a half. So a little good luck for them, but fine. They get Gondor towards war, which I think is right. And then I play Orc Patrol because I want to play it before the eyes come back in the pool and before the red tiles come back in the pool. Um, and I get a three. So that's good. I would have been happy with any non-eye tile because it gets those out of the pool. But obviously three is the absolute best possible tile I could draw here. So really good. They take one and they're up to seven corruption now. That's a big difference. They are effectively at four corruption going into Mordor. Um, I draw Isildur's Bane, which I'm happy to see. And they declare into Mordor. I roll, um, I allocate two eyes because that's the most I could allocate. And then they get three movement, which is nice. They start off by hiding, which is good. And I play Isildur's Bane right away. And my thinking is it probably doesn't matter too much when I play it. Maybe I should hold it so that there's a little more uncertainty for them. But my thinking is if they happen to hit Shelob and um, I get a three or higher, then Boromir and um, who is that? Mary uh, can will go away. And then these ones don't reveal them anymore because they'll have Gollum. So like how much does that matter? It's a super minor optimization. I think waiting does not help me any. Um, and so I'd rather I'd rather play it now. And <clears throat> yeah, I guess that's I guess that's my thinking. I'd rather I'd rather just play it now and see what happens. Um, any tile other than the eyes, I'll be happy with. Obviously, one reveal is great. Shelob could win the game immediately if I happen to roll really high. So any of those are good. Um and it doesn't accelerate Gollum, right? I, I would like these one reveals to actually reveal them and slow them down. Um, but I draw an eye. So that's that's a pretty big swing. I think the difference between having an eye in the pool and not having an eye in the pool is um, like that could really make a difference this turn. They're going to get to potentially move twice now with a ring. If they had been revealed with one with either the um, one stop reveal or either of these stops, then they would have only been able to move uh, potentially once. So I think it's the right play to play Isildur's Bane, but that's how it goes. All right, so uh, bad luck there. And then um, right, that was four. I had four out of there was eleven, so that's like a. Th 36% chance of drawing that. Not crazy. Not crazy. Um, all right. So they're thinking, do I have time to play Horn of Gondor or not? They do play Horn of Gondor. I think that's a little bit of a mistake. Um, it's pretty cool to have a game where you play Horn of Gondor and Axe and Bow. Um, so that's cool. And maybe that's like, this was some argument for, for waiting on Isildur's Bane. If I had waited, then maybe they would like not know what my character card was. Now they know I don't have any character cards. So maybe there's some argument for, for waiting there. Um, yeah, I don't know. So I get the mouth. That's good. They move and they get an eye. Um, they get rid of the horn and then they take a random. So I think that's right. Um, given that you've played the horn, um, you know, the eyes will cost you two, but there are still a lot of ones in the pool. I might've been, yeah, yeah, I think, I think it's right because this way, if, if you get these one reveals, you can still lose Bormir to it and then you won't be revealed. So, um, okay. So they get lucky and I mean, 50% chance, fine. Uh, get Mary and now they're revealed. Um, I muster a single elite in North Rune. It's hard to calculate exactly what I need, but I guess my thinking is I'll muster once. I'll move North Rune to Vale of Karnan and Old Forest Road into Woodland Realm. I'll finish off Woodland Realm with one attack, and then I'll merge up in Dale. That's that's my plan. Hopefully, I'll have about three units left over from Woodland Realm. That's my that's my rough thinking. I have um, two Deadly Strifes and Desperate Battle, so I'm in pretty good shape for combat cards. I move my armies as planned. Um, I attack into Woodland Realm 
using the character card because or the character die because I don't I know that I can't play any more character cards this turn. So um, I might as well get more efficient army movement later. So that's my thinking. They do have a daylight against my deadly strife. I don't love that. Um, you know, they hadn't played any daylights. I sort of expected a daylight there, but I'm still happy to try and get three hits. And I'm not too worried about their counterattack against me. Like, I don't want to lose too many, but still, uh, I want to take them out. So um, I get three hits, they get four hits. So maximum, absolute maximum damage on the Deadly Strife. It was indeed deadly. They go down to one. I go like this. I lose four regulars, and then I, um, and then I press. Because at this point, I want to try and move quickly with my military. I want to be efficient, and I'm... I think that these three regulars with Desperate Battle will be enough to take out their one regular. And I don't want to give them a chance to draw Thrandals. I don't want to give them a chance to draw Dane. So um, I'm trying to move quickly. Shadows on the Misty Mountain reinforces my ideas for considering an attack against Rivendell. I've definitely been eyeing Rivendell with Rage of the Dunlindings, Monsters Roused, Shadows on the Mount Misty Mountains now. But uh, they've had musters, so I haven't been too tempted. I play Monsters Roused as a combat card because I want to I want to make sure I finish it. Um, and I do get it. They get one hit back. So I ended up with two regulars. I had planned on three. Fine. Um, they draw a, a character card using their token. So, um, you know, this is something, this is a value we're seeing from the tokens. Just one extra card, one, you know, just one deeper, um, can, can help. So, uh, I move, I don't leave anyone behind in Woodland Realm because, if the dwarves, I'm going to move into Iron Hills, I think. So they use a ring to hide because they need to use rings every turn. And uh, and then I get a, I take over Iron Hills. Now, my thinking is, even though there's nobody left in Woodland Realm, if I attack Erebor and for some reason they play scouts and they retreat into um, Withered Heath, I do not actually have to move in and capture Erebor and dwarves will, will still be one away from war. And then I'll have a chance, I think... No, I guess not. I guess that's not exactly right. So if they put the dwarves to war, um, yeah, anyway, I, yes, this is slightly risky, um, but I just won't move into Erebor right away if they do that. And then I'll go fight these guys in Woodland Realm. And it, I don't think it'll cost me too much time and it'll cost them some time moving into Woodland Realm. I, I could be wrong, though. This this might be a slight inaccuracy. Um, and maybe I should have left one behind in Woodland Realm to avoid these sort of shenanigans. All right, um, I'm moving armies, and I'm a, you know I have a lot of empty strongholds. If I have some crazy roll and they're getting Gondor to war, um, I'm leaving one regular minus Morgul just to be safe. I don't know exactly where these guys are going. Maybe I should head them toward Pilargir. Um, I am hoping to draw Corsairs at some point, but these guys can also come over and take Edoras or loop around to take Minas Tirith. I'm not, just hadn't really decided yet where these guys should go. Um, curious to know what you would have done. Maybe I could have just attacked Erebor directly, but at some point I have to take uh, Iron Hills out. And by, by doing it in this order, I'm going to have the full army in Erebor. Maybe I don't have to take out Iron Hills, but I feel like I prob probably do. So I want to just completely take care of Dew and then get the Witch King out of there and, and get wherever I need to get for my remaining victory points. All right. Um, so I allocate one eye. Um, I roll one more and then they get this horrible roll. So this is, this is really bad luck. They probably can't, I mean, they can't destroy the ring. Oh, they drew, there's another way. I mean, so there's another way is really great. Um, they, they can't, um, they probably wouldn't have been able to destroy the ring this round, this turn anyway, but this is going to make it potentially hard for them to destroy the ring next round. So I do have two red tiles in there. <clears throat> and they've been in there for quite some time. So, and the hunt pool is not that big. So, all right. Um, let's see. They, yeah, so I don't know. Do I have enough to take take out um, the four cities? So we talked about this after the game. I have Rage of the Dunlandings. If I muster once in North Dunland, and then I play Rage. That's um, two dice. Three dice to move to South Eridluin and West Herondor. 
or maybe like dead marshes that's three and then four yeah i'm just i i don't think that i i get the four cities this round anyway they start mustering in gondor i still have not drawn corsairs so a little sad for me um <clears throat> and they did they did not draw um imrahil of dolamroth or kirden's ships so had i drawn corsairs of umbar sooner I would have been able to take that out uh, with very, very weak defenses. So maybe should have been drawing strategy cards. Just maybe just always draw strategy cards. Um, all right. So they muster more in Dol Amroth. I attack Erebor and uh, I cycle a character card because at this point I'm just hoping to get more um, red tiles or things that hurt the fellowship. And I roll very well. So that was uh, three sixes and a leader, and that's going to allow me to take out. Um, they play no quarter, but um, in the end, I have enough to take them out with Great Host, um, and that's the end of Erebor. So pretty efficient combats up here. Um, I definitely got a bit lucky with those sixes. Um, I am plus six on sixes, minus five on fives, but I've definitely gotten some good benefit out of that. Um, so, so what do you do here? I need three more victory points. Can I get the cities this round? I, I just don't see it happening. Um, and they have a bunch of musters in the Shire. I know they've played Power of Tom Bombadil. Um, and I know they've played Kindle of Clorfindel. I would love to go after Rivendell with Shadows on the Misty Mountain and Rage of the Dunlundings, but I just don't think... It's possible. So I decide that um, they undo, and I think that's right. They should wait to see what where I'm attacking. I play Palantir Vorthank, and I know that they're not going to be able to get rid of it because um, because they just don't have um, they just don't have extra rings. They need to be able to move. So this is a nice time for Palantir Vorthank, and I use the character um, card. The character died to play it because um, I will then, with this Palantir, be able to redraw a character card. So my plan at this point is let's put Corruption Pressure on. I should be able to, with these dice, be able to get um, 10 victory points next round. So I might as well um, just apply Corruption Pressure otherwise. So I muster in, I use the voice, and then I upgrade in Orthanc. They retreat armies into Helm's Deep. I don't think this army is this army in Helm's Deep is going to be enough. Um, I muster in Orthanc, uh, and then they use a ring to move. And um, this is standard. Um, certainly, they had to spend a ring to avoid taking the corruption. Um, and then they get the second best tile, right? I mean, I guess these one reveals are about the same. Um, so I, I guess it doesn't it doesn't really matter. Maybe they I mean, I think they're happy to um, get that tile. Obviously, that's a, a good tile. Um, they just take the one corruption and that's probably I, I don't know if that's a mistake or not. Um, they do have there's another way and um, and Bilbo song. So I don't know. It's 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 a wash either way, probably. I play Rage of the Dunlundings to get my army in position, and then they play Bilbo Song. To, uh, they thought it healed two, but um, then they end up still playing it because it heals one, um, which I think is right. That's fine. Um, it's kind of a wash to lose to lose Boromir to a one and then heal for two with Bilbo Song, or um, or to do it this way and save Boromir for for a two damage next round. It's, it's probably similar either way. Um, I would say it, it was, uh, now that we think about it more, slightly better to, um, to lose Boromir and then heal two. Because that way, um, if you get this one reveal next time, you're definitely going to want to, almost certainly going to want to lose Boromir to it. And that would be inefficient. So might as well take the inefficiency now, but then gain it back from um, Bilbo Song. So... Um, all right, I move armies into Fords of Aizen, and um, I, I go North Athelion to Dead Marshes. I'm thinking that this army will come to Edoras. It could. Um, 
and uh, m maybe a mistake. Maybe West. Maybe I should have gone from Umbar to Westerondor, so that I could um, threaten to take Pelargir. My thinking is. Gondor could come and bring a decent army to Pelargir. Um, and I think I want this mouth over in Helm's Deep in case there's a chance for um, Gandalf to come there, especially if I'm going to move all these units out and then there'll be Ents. And so, um, yeah, I I don't know. This is maybe a minor inaccuracy. If I had, if I had rolled fewer attacks on turn eight. Um, so they get Athelas. Wow, I didn't see that. Um, and I finally draw Corsairs. So, and breaking the fellowship can be good. It's one corruption. I allocate one eye, roll one more, and I got plenty of attacks. So, I think upon reflection, I, oh, let's see what they roll. So, they get two movement. And um, this is enough for them if I don't have Day Without Dawn, and if they don't get revealed, and if they have theirs another way. So, um, yeah. So they start by moving, and they have to put the um, Will of the West in. They, it's always nice to start with um, There's Another Way, because then eye tiles are lower, because There's Another Way does not put the um, the die into the hunt box. But they don't want to risk losing two Wills of the West today without Dawn. Um, because this way, even if I have Day Without Dawn, there's still some chance they could destroy the ring this round. So um, they get an eye, and, um, you know, that's not great for them. They would prefer um, any of these, uh, the one, the one, the two, or the zero, but certainly good to not see the red tiles. So um, so that's nice. And um, they get revealed there. Bormir goes away, and that was an efficient use of Bormir. I got one Palantir, and I calculate for a second that if they don't have there's another way. There's no way they can destroy the ring this round. If they do have there's another way, they'll be at six corruption. And then um, they'll uh, maybe take a one or possibly a two, putting them up to eight. Um, so if they take a one, then even if I use my ring, to put my uh, tile in, this final eye would not be deadly. So I decide it's worth playing Breaking the Fellowship now in case they have theirs another way and in case on their um, next move they will be hidden. I mean, they'll still be hidden. Then uh, I will be able to spend a ring and threaten uh, this ring at least being a deadly tile. So, and I think that I have enough dice to be able to take out Helm's Deep and take Pilar Gear. I can use Corsairs of Umbar to take Pelargir very efficiently, or I can march this army over to Edoras, or I can march this army from Umbar into Pelargir. So there are a lot of there's, there's a lot of ways. All right, so I play Breaking now. I get to redraw with the Palantir, and I draw a character card because um, I have enough military power, I think, with these Deadly Strifes, with the Onslaught. So I just want to um, do as much as I can to increase my chances of stopping the Fellowship, if they even have theirs another way. So um, I misclick and put Worm Tongue in Old Forest Road. Uh, they uh, they hide, and so I didn't have Day Without Dawn. If I had that, that obviously would have been good. And um, then I move my armies around. And my thinking is, yeah, if they have ends, if they have there's another way, then yeah, that's that. I will still be able to um, move my move the Witch King down to Fords of Eisen and attack with full leadership. And if they have, um, let's say, Gwahir or um, We Prove the Swifter and they choose to move Gandalf into Helm's Deep with, and they don't have theirs another way, I still think that I have enough combat power with these two Deadly Strifes um, and with the Onslaught to be able to take out this army with um, without any leadership. So that's, that's my thinking. Um, so I, um, what? Why, what happened with my army and what just happened? 
they I'm trying to did they move in I, why did I just see an army move to dead marshes all right so what happened they hid um and then I what the heck Sorry, I'm just trying to figure out, was there an error here? Did I just get an extra movement out of nothing? So I play Breaking, their Corruption goes up. I draw a strategy card, or I draw a character card with the Palantir. They play a Will of the West to um, hide the Fellowship. I see. Okay. I just moved armies. So I move armies and um, and I didn't draw a useful character card. So I think that was a slight misplay on their part to pass there. Um, they should have moved because if I had just redrawn a red tile from the Palantir, I could have played it. And um, their plan is to destroy the destroy the ring this round so they could have just then instead of passing they could have played um ents followed by um there's another way and that way if i just redrew a, a red tile I, it wouldn't have been in the pool if i had drawn a red tile or really anything that could hurt the fellowship i would have played it um but i didn't i redrew more time okay um and also the fact that I can still attack with a character die doesn't really matter because I just would have moved the Witch King in. Um, the other thing is I'm not really worried about... Um, the other thing about if they if they play an Ent to take out um, Saruman, then I um, that's, an, that's a combat card that they're not playing against me. So, um, all right. So they play Ents, they kill Saruman, um, and then they play There's Another Way. So obviously I am not pleased that they have There's Another Way. Um, there's now a chance that they can destroy the ring. If they do not get any of the red tiles here, um, or the eye, then they'll have a chance to destroy it. So, um, they get a one and, um, they take the one corruption. So this is the moment that I had foreseen all the way back when I played breaking on turn one <laughs> on my first action of the round, um, because now they're at four and, um, and now I can use a ring. I turn this character die uh, into an eye. And now this eye that's left in the pool is now deadly. So, yeah, that's that's what we can do. Um, I move my uh, arm, my uh, Nazgul around. Uh, I They pass. I attack into Helm's Deep. I have a bunch of good combat cards. I play... Um, I play a character card first because I think that I have enough to win this battle. And um, I already have Corsairs of Umbar, so I can very efficiently take Pilar gear. And therefore, if I happen to redraw a, a useful character card and um, they don't move immediately, then I can, um, you know, then I can do something. But I redraw. Um, anyway, I get I get some hits. They get some hits, um, and I redraw Dreadful Spells. So nothing useful. Um, in the end, this combat is pretty predictable, and um, Ro uh, Helm's Deep dies. Uh, not too surprising there. Palantir is gone because if you kill... That's the best way, by the way, of getting rid of Palantir of Orthanc. If you uh, use Ents to get rid of Saruman, then Palantir of Orthanc also goes away because you have to have Saruman in play to be able to have um, Palantir of Orthanc. So... Um, all right, so I'm at nine victory points. They see that I'm going to get to 10 no matter what. They properly move um, because if I had redrawn uh, a red tile there or something, better for them to move right away. Um, Hunt pool is really 50-50, and, um, and they do not die. So um, that was uh, a good game. They had that pretty bad turn in Mordor. Uh, the second round in Mordor when they didn't roll any movement. Um, that said, they had a overall very pleasant climb, I think, up Mordor. Um, they got a one, a one, a one, a, a I for two and an I for two. Um, 
right? I think that's what happened. And they missed the red tiles the entire time. And I had two, I had two red tiles in there. Um, so if we just want to think about the chances of um, what they would have, like what are the chances of drawing no red tiles? If the pool started at, they drew five tiles. So the pool started at um, 10. So to miss a red tile on the first try would be eight out of 10 times uh, seven out of nine times uh, six out of eight times five out of um, seven times four out of six, right? That was the, the final the final movement. So the chances of not having any of those, let's uh, see what that math is, um, 22%. So a 22% chance of missing two red tiles the entire way up Mordor. Um, and obviously, you know, if they hit a red tile, especially this one stop reveal, that cost them two movement, but really not very much corruption. So they probably had a pretty pleasant climb. Um, if we want to look at my, I have a, um, I have a Mordor sim. Uh, let's look at that. Just to, just, to, I'm curious, um, how lucky they got there. Um, so here is my, here's my Mordor sim. Let's see if you can see this. Um, this is going to be tough. Nope. Um, okay. I will, I will input some things. So going back to the beginning, let's, let's go back to the beginning for a second. Um, the hunt pool was, uh, oh, right. And I missed with Isildurs, right. Um, wow. So they got I one, I one, one pretty good. Uh, okay, so the actual hunt pool when they started, when they started Mordor, we'll take a moment to analyze this. There was no, there were no zeros left. Uh, we'll say the eye damage is only two. We will say that they needed one hit to use Gollum, and they w did not use Gollum's ability. They did not have Mithril, and they had two one reveals, a single one regular one right i'm just looking at this uh at this hunt pool um they had a two reveal no two reveals they did have a two there were no threes left there were four eyes there was one zero there was the one stop and there was shelob so this is what this is what we have in terms of the setup of what their um Just to show, uh, how can I get that on screen? Here we go. So we'll <clears throat> we'll do it for a ten thousand uh, trials, and we'll see at the top. So we would expect, on average, that they would need <clears throat> uh, eight point three character dice, and. Um, they would take about 10 corruption. Now they started at seven. They started the run at seven or six. I can't remember if they started it at seven or six. They healed two. So how many character dice did they actually use? They used, I mean, counting the, counting the, um, there's another way. They got revealed twice, so they did use they use seven dice. So that's not really that crazy, right? We're in the we're in the um, just to show this, like about a fifty percent. I guess this is about forty five percent. Oh no, this is some. All right, so thirty thirty percent chance. So a pretty good a pretty good Mordor run, um, but not so crazy. You know, they did have to use seven seven movement to get there. 
and um, in terms of corruption, like they still had, they still had some room, right? <clears throat> Even if they had gotten a little more corruption, it still would have been fine. So um, yeah, a little bit of a lucky mortar run, but not so, not so lucky. And um, let's look at the statistics. So I was definitely positive on sixes, had some good hunt luck early on. And um, they got they got a lot of wills to the West, which were quite flexible for them. And I didn't ever draw a day without Dawn. But in terms of overall movement, they were only plus one on movement. <clears throat> and I was quite positive on my attacks. So the fact that I didn't get musters early did hurt me slightly with the Witch King for one round. But um, overall, I think this was a pretty balanced game. Obviously, in the end, it came down to a 50-50 chance. So... Things were things were pretty balanced overall. I would say my opponent played well. Um, I'm I'm curious to know if you would have done anything differently. Turn eight military victory, not horrible. Um, they got um, Gandalf turn two, which obviously can really help accelerate the fellowship and help you get there. Even if you lose Strider, they were able to get the job done. And um, yeah, interesting game. I look forward to your comments. Uh, it is double elimination, so I will play in the loser's bracket for the rest of this tournament, and we'll see we'll see how I can do. Uh, last year of uh, in the league tournament, I lost uh, my first two games, so maybe I will do I will do better than getting eliminated as soon as possible uh, this year. But uh, good luck to Shiggy for the rest, and uh, thanks for watching. Have a good rest of the day.